Welcome to the installation video of the Curt 60648 Underbed Install Kit with the 60619 EZR Gooseneck Hitch on a 2007 Silverado 2500 HD. To give you a better view of the installation, we are using a lift. Like most installations, this vehicle does not need to be elevated for the install. We estimate this installation to take one to two hours depending on your level of expertise. These are the tools needed for the install. To begin, remove the spare tire to provide more room for the installation. The entire heat shield may be removed or a portion can be cut out. For this installation, we are trimming the heat shield in front of the bed support over the axle to the back of the bed support near the front of the wheel well. Use a rotary cutting tool to cut and remove this section of the heat shield. For a clean edge, use a mallet to bend the cut edge up around the vehicle's bed support. Run a 1 half inch hex bolt through the cross arms threads to remove excess powder coating or debris from the rear cross arm. Repeat this on all six cross arms mounting holes. Next, prepare to insert the rear cross arm. Notice that the holes are closer to one edge. This edge should be facing the front of the truck when inserted, so that after the cross arm is rotated into position, this edge can face downwards. Slide the rear cross arm between the frame and the bottom of the truck bed. Once the cross arm spans the frame rails, use a large wrench to rotate the cross arm so the holes face the ground. Once the cross arm is rotated, push it towards the rear of the vehicle. Insert the front cross arm with the holes facing the back of the truck. To allow adequate room to insert the front cross arm, you may need to use a crescent wrench to bend the metal flange or use a rotary tool to cut a space in the flange. After sufficient room has been made, Slide the cross arm in between the truck frame and the floor of the truck bed. Once the cross arm has been inserted, push it towards the front of the vehicle to make room for the center section. Remove the vacuum canister on the fuel tank to make room for the center section by pushing down on the plastic mounting tab behind it and sliding the canister out. Use the handle loop on the center section to determine which side will face the front of the vehicle. The handle will be on the driver's side. Prepare the center section by placing two one inch carriage bolts in through the centermost slots on the front side of the center section. With the serrations of the bolt retainers facing outward, place the retainer onto the carriage bolt. Use one of the included spacers to help push the bolt retainer into position. Before lifting the hitch into position, make sure that the center locator is inserted into the cylinder. Lift the center section into place, positioning it between the two cross arms. Align the square holes in the center section with the holes in the cross arm and loosely attach the front cross arms using the provided one half inch carriage bolts and hex flange nuts until finger tight. The mounting location over the fuel tank we'll use a carriage bolt installed with a square hole spacer. To assist in this, you can use a fish wire tool. Place the coiled end of the fish wire through the mounting hole. Thread the carriage bolt with a spacer onto the coiled end. Pull the fish wire back through the hole to position the carriage bolt. Remove the fish wire and secure the bolt with a hex flange nut. Once the front cross arm hardware is loosely installed, attach the rear cross arm using the four one half inch hex bolts and conical toothed washers. Starting on the driver's side, place the side plate against the frame at the mounting location. 3500 models will use the bottom right mounting hole. 
2500 models will use the bottom left mounting hole, and 1500 models will use the top mounting hole. For this installation, we will be using the 2500 mounting location. Using a mallet, adjust the placement of the cross arms as needed. Attach the side plate to the frame with the provided 3 quarter inch bolt, two large spacers, and a brown spacer to fill the slot in the frame. Secure with the provided flange nut. Attach the side plate flanges to the cross arms with a 1 half inch hex bolt and 1 half inch conical toothed washer in the attachment point closest to the back of the truck, and a 1 half inch carriage bolt, spacer, and flange nut in the attachment point closest to the front of the truck. To secure the side plates to the frame of the truck, you will need to use one of the provided U-bolts. For 1500 models, use the smaller U-bolt, and for 25 and 3500 models, use the larger U-bolt. For this installation, we will be using the larger U-bolt. Position the U-bolt from the inside of the truck frame, taking care not to damage or pinch the wiring harness or brake lines. Fasten with two of the provided 1 half inch flange nuts until finger tight. Repeat this process on the opposite side. Torque all hardware to the amount specified in the included instruction sheet in the following order. First, tighten the center section of the front and rear cross arms. Then, the side plates to the truck frame on both sides. And finally, torque the side plate flanges to the front and rear cross arms. If desired, the topmost U-bolt can be trimmed to provide additional handle rod clearance. Now we're ready to do some drilling. From underneath the truck, use the center locator as a guide to drill a pilot hole up through the truck bed. To determine the correct safety chain hole locations for your vehicle, refer to the diagram in the included instruction sheet. Using a 5 8 inch drill bit and the center section as a guide, drill four holes from underneath the truck bed. Make sure the holes are located on the lower section of the truck bed. To ensure smoother operation of the safety chain loops, use a step bit to slightly enlarge the holes from above the truck bed. With a 4 inch hole saw, drill a hole from the top of the truck using the previously drilled pilot hole as a guide. Be careful not to drill through the center locator. We recommend using cutting fluid to ease the drilling process. Remove the center locator by pulling it up through the hole, deburr the drilled holes, and coat any exposed metal with rust inhibitor or touch-up paint. Optionally, for a clean finished look, insert the rubber edging around the 4-inch hole. Place the chrome ring into position with the countersunk holes facing up. Fasten with the three head cap screws. Insert the safety chain U-bolts down through the drilled holes. From underneath the truck, place a washer, spring, another washer, and a 5 8 inch nylock nut on each of the four U-bolt legs. Tighten the nuts until they are flush with the bottom of the U-bolt. Next, insert the cast lock pin into the ball cylinder with the hole located on top. Next, insert the handle rod. On some trucks, you may need to create more clearance by bending the metal flange with a wrench or cutting a notch. In this instance, we will be enlarging the previously cut notch. Insert the handle rod through the hole in the side plate and through the rod guide. From underneath the truck, slide one 3 8 inch washer, compression spring, and second washer over the handle rod. Insert the handle rod into the locking pin and secure it with a hex head flange screw and nylock nut.
To relocate the vacuum canister, clean the area thoroughly with a soapy water mixture and an alcohol swab to remove any grease or oils. Apply the cable tie mounts 3 inches apart and 5 to 6 inches lower than the original location. Insert the cable tie into the mounts, position the vacuum canister over the cable tie, and fasten in the new location. Reinstall the spare tire. Finally, locate a suitable place to apply the product usage sticker. For this installation, we have chosen the spot in the wheel well near the handle. Now that everything is installed, let's go over the operation of your brand new gooseneck hitch. To remove the pin and reposition the ball, hold the handle out as far as possible and rotate it clockwise until the locking pin is disengaged and locked out. Insert the ball into the cylinder by aligning the ball groove with the cylinder pin. Rotate the handle counterclockwise until the locking pin snaps back into position. Before towing, always double check to make sure that the pin passes completely through the ball and cylinder. When not in use, the gooseneck ball can be flipped over and conveniently stored within the cylinder and covered with the provided rubber cap. This completes the installation video of the Kurt 60648 Underbed Install Kit with the 60619 EZR Gooseneck Hitch on a 2007 Silverado 2500 HD. Thank you for watching this video. Now you can bring it. Kurt, the first name in towing products.